Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Once again, my name is Allergic Matt. Yes, for those of you who are not in the Prescott, Northern Arizona area, allergies are in full bloom times 10, especially with this insane windy ass storm we have going on right now so uh if it sounds like i'm underwater or i'm drunk or i'm stuffed up or all three it's because my allergies are kicking my butt and i'm taking as many drugs as i can legal ones mostly with me as always my good buddy who is not an allergy sufferer like me mysterious mike talent Hey man, I I get some allergies sometimes, but uh, right now I, I'm I'm feeling okay. I know you're allergic to bullshit. What else are you allergic to, Mike? No, <laughs> that's that's pretty funny. You were really quick on that one. Uh, oak pollen. I am allergic to oak pollen. So you're allergic to wood. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Makes me wonder wonder why I like the flaccid penis, huh? It, it does. If you're so allergic to, to it, you know, I mean, why would you want it if you're going to sneeze and, you know, cough and choke? But it, is the coughing and choking really part of the allergies, Mike? We know better. Yeah, well, it's it's kind of, you know, opposites attract. Sure. All right. That works, even though it's the same Z's. <laughs> so, OK. All right. I'm not going to dick around too much because Mike is on a schedule. He is very exhausted. I am running late and very allergic so this week for Real Film Nerds, episode number 317, we're talking about a movie based on a board game, based on a novel or fiction or whatever. I don't know. There's so much things going on. We're talking about Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. Mysterious Mike Talent, why don't you go ahead and break this one down? All right, Matt. So uh, this one was uh, directed by uh, John Francis Daly and Jonathan Goldstein. And it was also written by uh, Jonathan Goldstein and, and uh, John Francis Daly and Michael uh, Gaeo, uh screenplay story by. And this movie is starring uh, Chris Pine, uh, Michelle Rodriguez, Reggae Jean Page, Reggae, Reggae Jean Page, maybe, uh, Justice Smith, Sophia Lyonis, Hugh Grant, and Chloe Coleman. And this movie is about a charming thief and a band of unlikely adventures embark on an epic. A uh, quest to retrieve a lost relic, but things go dangerously awry when the run afoul of the wrong people. Mike, first impressions. Ready, set, go. Uh, dude, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, I actually have played Dungeons and Dragons and things, and although I didn't really see a whole bunch of stuff like that, I could see s- kind of how it was and some of the roles and how the, the, the people were put together. But, uh, you know, I still had a, I had a lot of fun. I think a lot of people who uh, think this movie, you have to be like an ultra nerd. You, you don't have to. Like, it's pretty, it's pretty much just a movie, you know, like, and I think that's what they wanted. Um, I, I think there's some things in there, but I didn't catch too much stuff, but I'm sure there's stuff in there that, that are, uh, for the ultra nerds, but it was fun. I thought it was a fun movie, man. Mike, um, when did you play D and D? Uh, well, at the first time I played it was like, I think eighth grade, eighth or ninth grade at, uh, one, one of these, uh, guys houses. And then my parents got mad at me cause they said it was the devil. Okay. Cause yeah, that was one of the reasons I was not allowed to play it. Is because in the 80s, they came out with all kinds of news programs and reports and magazine articles about how Dungeons and Dragons was the devil. And so was uh, heavy metal music and all that. 
Uh, if you want to see a little snippet of what went on, they talk about it a little bit in uh, the Netflix original Stranger Things. But yeah, that's why I could never play D&D when I was growing up because it was evil and satanic. And, uh, you know, people are wiser now because they tend to go and do research and find out, oh, no, it's not at all. It's just a game. Yeah. Um, and then uh, re- more recently, I played with some of my nerdy friends. Uh, Matt, I, I have a somewhat regular but not super regular nerd night where we go and play uh, board games and various things. And we played Dungeons and Dragons before. But it's it's a little bit... Uh, it, it can take a really long time to do different like quests or whatever. So sometimes we don't have enough time to do that. So we play some other games. Dude, I so one of my former girlfriends was uh, heavy into D&D. Loved it. She went every Monday to the game store and played. She had a quest that I think was going for like three years. Every Monday. Wow, man. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Totally believable. They, you know, Dungeons and Dragons is kind of as much as you want to put into it, you can get out of it. It's really, it's pretty neat in that way, and it's it's very imaginative, and I don't know, it's it's a it's a fun fun game. Well, what I like today is that they have uh, themed Dungeons and Dragons. You know, it's just Dungeons and Dragons is a generic term nowadays. It's a game, but it's a generic term for basically a role playing game. But they have uh, D and D style Star Wars, uh, anything you can imagine. Uh, the Star Wars one obviously interests me the most. But there's ones to do with like city building. There's ones to do with futurism. There's sci fi ones. It's not just Dungeons and Dragons straight up. Like that's the original. Yes, they're the first. But you can go to a game store and get a book. You can buy your dice and you can do your own kind of. D D on any other style that you want i mean that's why there's so many out there is because it's such a successful style of gameplay yeah yeah no it's it's a lot of fun um you know when you when you invest in it and stuff uh but uh yeah matt what what did you think about this movie did you, you think it was a, a fun or what what are your first impressions Okay, so I don't know if you're going to hear from it or not uh, later on at the end of this podcast. I have not talked with Ma Hinshaw yet, but Ma Hinshaw did not uh, have a time, have a time, have a chance or time to do a cookies on John Wick Chapter 4, even though she really wanted to. She gave it a perfect score, five out of five cookies, by the way. She loved John Wick, which is amazing for my mom. She's not super huge into action, but... um. Uh, I'm hoping to discuss it with my mom after this, but my mom was up here visiting me and we went and saw Dungeons and Dragons together. And, uh, you know what? I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. It's not a mind bending movie. It's not some incredible film like John Wick or, you know, something like that, but it's fun. It's a lot of fun. You don't really need to think a whole lot about it. You just kind of enjoy it. The thing that I didn't anticipate, though, was this is a heavy creature movie. There's a lot of really fun, interesting, and just crazy creatures. That's true. There are quite a few crazy creatures in this. It is, it's is. got a lot of creatures, which is which is neat. Uh, um, I don't think it's a spoiler, Matt. Is it a spoiler to talk about the one large uh, uh, fire-breathing thing? Maybe because it's it's not in the trailer. Now the one the one that was really fun is the owl bear. The owl bear is in the trailer, so you can talk about that one. But I think the other one we need to talk about later. But uh, I I'd say it's a monster movie, but it's not a monster movie. There's scary creatures in it. There's fun creatures in it. There's cool creatures in it. There's helpful creatures. There's all kinds of just animals and monsters and they're not really animals there's some you know there's a lot going on outside of just the uh human characters in this and i really like that i thought that was fun yeah 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 no it, it it was a fun movie man um from beginning to end i i i liked uh um the the whole thing actually so it was it was good um well it's uh, it's it's too early for this, Matt, but there was a fun cameo in it. Okay, we'll get to that later, Mike. We will get to that later. If you want to get to it, we can get to it now. You're the one that controls the show from this aspect. 
Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, oh, okay, Matt. Well, what are you drinking this fo- fine um, allergy-driven day? Do you have something that kicks away the allergies, just clears out those nostrils? <sighs> uh, I do. It's called Jameson, but that's not what I'm drinking. I'm drinking just a good old-fashioned Miller High Life, the champagne of beers, because it was the first thing I saw, and I was running late, and I just was like, okay, we need to record. Nice, dude. Uh, I am drinking a Sierra Nevada Hop Bullet. It is a hoppy IPA, of course. I think that's what you had last week, too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going through those. Was it another one on special? Uh, Yeah, yeah. So Mike's beers literally are special beers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes I get those BOGOs, you know, buy one, get one. Those are great. Okay, Mike. So, you know, I don't want to get too off topic, but uh, uh, that store you always shop at that you like so much, Aldi, and I've never seen in Arizona. Yeah, dude. They, ha- I saw one in Arizona. Oh yeah, where? Uh, Goodyear. Nice, dude. I was like, man, I want to stop and like grab uh, some beers or just go check it out because I've never been in one. But I was going to a baseball game, so I didn't stop. Well, they're out there, Matt. I know. Well, I just never seen them in Arizona, so I'm going to have to find one and check it out. So, okay, I'll get back on topic. Mike, most important part of the podcast for you. Mike, what is this week's dad jokes? I got dad jokes. I don't think they understand, though. Gotta think I'm funny. Other people never laugh, though. Dad jokes. Uh, Matt, why didn't the cat go to the vet? Because I had nine lives? He was feline fine. That's pretty rough, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you, and you know, of course, to go along with my allergies, Mike rubs salt in the wounds by talking about cats, the thing I'm most allergic to in this world. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like, uh, you know, it could be worse. It's to remind you it could be worse, man. You could have a cat crawling on your lap right now. I'm fine with them as animals, but I'm not fine with them on what they do to my body. It is... Honestly, like, if you're not allergic to cats, you don't understand. It's painful. It's literally painful not being able to breathe. My eyes feel like someone's dropping lighter fluid in in them, lighting them on fire. It's fucking horrible. It's hell. Absolute hell. And for some reason, the current girlfriend cannot understand that. It cannot understand why I don't want to move in with her because of her fucking cat. Whoa. Whoa, Matt. Little too much. Too much there, buddy. Dude, you kicked open the fucking door. I just walked through it. All right, all right. Matt, I'm actually allergic to cats, but uh, I don't have as nearly as severe as you do. Dude, one of my worst was at your fucking house. You remember when you were in college? Yeah. I was oh, yeah. sleeping on the couch. Dude, I almost fucking died. I could not breathe at all. And I told you, how what, you had three cats back then? Four. Four. <laughs> Four. It was either three or four. And I remember I woke up in the middle of the night and all fucking four of them were standing on my chest and my stomach. And I was just like, God, they just know. They fucking know. (laughs) They do, man. You know, cats, they're all little assholes. They are. They're fucking horrible. (laughs) God. Okay. All right. All right. Back on top. They probably were like, let's see if he actually stops breathing. Yeah. Let's see if we can kill this (laughs) motherfucker. See if the coroner shows up tomorrow. God, it was so bad. I was so fucking, oh, that was bad. Although, the honestly, it wasn't any worse than like one cat. It was pretty much just the same. There was just more of it, I guess. Yeah, you got all the danders. Yeah, it's not just the dander. It's a lot. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It's fucking horrible. For those of you who love cats, great, good on you. But for me, no, sorry. So, anyways, okay, Mike, how does Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? All right, Matt, thanks for asking. Uh, This one's not too bad. Uh, The director, uh, or one of the directors, uh, John Francis Daly, uh, also wrote the screenplay for Spider-Man Homecoming. See, that was pretty easy. That's one of the main people. Yeah, yeah. 
It's interesting because uh, he he was uh, big on the Bones show, so like I recognize him. But he's done a lot of stuff. Like he's actually he was he was in waiting and like all kinds of stuff. So he's pretty he got quite a big career. The Bone Show is that a porno? No, no, no. Bones, you know, like the with the the forensic uh, anthropologist. Sure. Why not? You you didn't watch the obviously you didn't watch the show. No, I did not. Yeah. Anyway. It was about solving murders, like like ninety percent of the shows, uh, but they had to figure it out from like the evidence from Bones. So was it like CSI Bones? Yeah, pretty much. Did they call the show? No, they didn't call it CSI Boners, did they? <laughs> no, it's not. It wasn't a CSI, but it was like so. It was produced on Fox, so it was like an answer to CSI since that was on CBS. So then why did you watch it? Or do you like CSI too, Mike? Uh, I love CSI, man. It's fun. Okay. Not my thing. Sorry. Well, it's either, you know, you choose a cop show or you choose a, a murder show. And sometimes they're the same show. I'll just watch rewatch The Shield. That's a great show. See? There you go. There's a cop show. But it doesn't, well, no, it probably has bones in it. Yeah. Anyway, there's a show, Matt, that was on Fox for, I don't know, 10 10 years called Bones. And he was one of the main characters. Now, his name was Bones or did he research Bones? I'm so confused. No, no, no. The the main doctor in it is, uh, man, now you're going to have me look up all these people. Did he like eat the bones? Okay, we don't need to do that. We need to talk about Dungeons and Dragons on our month things. Because we're now in the spoiler section, so we can talk about the spoilers, Mike. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, man. What spoiler do you want to talk about? Well, I'm just going to say this first off before we get too much into spoilers. Uh, I should really try and remember to do this, but I definitely recommend people go see this movie, especially in the theaters. It's a lot of fun. It's not going to win any awards or set any records or blow your mind, but it's just a fun, good time. And... Yeah, it's just fun and it's a good time and you don't have to think about it and it takes you away from the perils and horribleness of everyday life. Uh, there you go, Matt. That that was uh, diving deep there at the end. But uh, no, it it is a great movie. It is a lot of fun. Um, and you don't have to be like a nerd to know about Dungeons and Dragons. It's like, I understand that's kind of what it's based on, but uh, you you don't have to be. It's, it's just a lot of fun. It is a very very well done okay mike oh geez see now the allergy medication is making me fall asleep okay mike go ahead now you can spoil it you want to talk about the fat dragon i know you really wanted to talk about that earlier i did want to talk about the fat dragon dude that was awesome dude that shit was hilarious that's one thing dungeons and dragons honor among thieves reminds me very much of like the first guardians of the galaxy or like thor ragnarok like there's enough humor in it to make it fun, but it's not overwhelming and silly and dumb like the most recent Thor film that really upset me. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, Matt, I, I even lo- I love the cameo with uh, um, uh, Bradley Cooper. Yes, that Dude, was that good. Was, that was really it was, good. It was fun, man. And he was a small person, like, and then she's like this ripped uh, woman. It was very fun. I do have to compliment Michelle Rodriguez. Like she's always been very in shape and toned, but she's never been like cut and like bulked up. Maybe it was half of her costume or what, but her arms were pretty, pretty swollen there. Mike, she looked really much the part like, and that was what her character was supposed to be is not so much like this barbarian, but this strong, very powerful woman not just woman but character that can throw people like literally across the screen and stuff and she embodied it she looked good she really really looked the part she did dude she did it it was it was it was just it was a good cast chris pine and 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 michelle rodriguez played well off of each other because they're kind of like opposites but together and um 
Yeah, and I, I even like, um, oh, what was his name? Uh, the character, the the sorcerer, was it Justin? Justice Smith. Uh, yeah, he yeah. played Simon. Yeah, Justice Smith. Um, I like Simon's character because he's just kind of this little like little guy that that Chris Pine like believed could do better than he was, and I thought that was great. Yeah, he gave the little man a chance, which was awesome. And then, oh, of course, uh, was it uh, Reggie Jean Page? His character was amazing, the paladin. That dude was just like the ultra badass. And they even made fun of him for it. Like, look, he's just going to walk in a straight line. Look, he's not going to walk around that stone. And he didn't. He just walked right over it. <laughs> so much fun. It was funny. They were like, uh, they, they did make fun of him. It, and he was such an interesting character, the way he spoke. Yeah, no, it was. He did a very good job. He was one of my favorite actors in the film. Of course, Chris Pine and uh, Michelle Rodriguez did a fantastic job, and so does Hugh Grant. I mean, we're in spoilers; we can do this. But Hugh Grant's the villain, and he does a wonderful job being a villain. Yeah, Hugh Grant's been kind of in what couple movies we've watched just recently, and he was great. Yeah, in both of them, a villain in both of them too. Yeah, yeah, he was great though. Like, in uh, I don't know what the resurgence is. Uh, maybe he's just, I don't know, been maybe he had other things going on. Who knows? I don't know, man, but it's fun. I like it. I enjoyed it. Uh, I think he did a great job. I think they all did a really good job. Uh, honestly, I don't know how you could make this film too much better other than maybe the story and some of the CGI was a little rough. But the cinematography was decent. Nothing earth-shattering. The story was good. Um, the comedy was fun. The acting was fun. Uh, it might have been a little long, but it didn't feel super long. Uh, they developed the characters pretty good. Uh, they jumped. You know, they did some kind of time jumping here and there. Uh, you know, I'll speak on one of those when they uh, are waiting for the one uh, councilman to come from the uh, the council of like peers for the jail and it turns out to be a giant bird and they jump on him and jump out the window that was good that was that was really funny dude that was awesome i was like i i kept thinking that like there was something like he knew him or they like but no it was like we just need a bird and we're just gonna fly like it was awesome and then and then as they're falling they're like we we approved your yeah release we were we approved your pardon <laughs> they're just ah shit and then he, uh, the callback to it at the end of the movie with hugh grant was pretty funny too that he tried it too and it was a brick wall <laughs> yeah they're not gonna have that happen twice no no it was good it was a good callback it was fun yeah no no th this movie was fun i mean even the evil like uh witch lady she was great like um the what do they call them red red witch uh red something right the red sorcerers i think yeah yeah she was a good just super evil character well i didn't understand her a whole lot because she was clearly a puppet under the main red sorcerer red wizard or whatever because they show him and they're talking at like one scene and that's when you find out that she's one of the red wizards or whatever but then you never see him again for the rest of the movie, even though clearly she's doing all this to appease him, but she's not, but she is maybe I, I, I didn't understand that. That's one of the story things that fell through the cracks for me. Well, that they do show him again when he does the thing with the, the red, whatever gas. Yeah. But she was the one doing it. It wasn't him. No, no. But, but, but the, when they, they're giving you the, what happened or whatever before. Oh yeah. The first time. No, I was yeah. just talking. So you see him in the shadows and he talks to her and then you don't see him as a person again. You just see the flashbacks. Oh yeah. No, even though true. she's the one he's controlling her and telling her what to do and how to do it. You would think he would have made an appearance at the end when they were doing the red mist stuff again to the rest of the town because she was doing it for him, not herself. Yeah, but I think she was just like a, a tentacle of uh, many, many tentacles. You know, like they're trying to do that all over the place. That's what I got the feeling. Okay. All right. I just think it should have shown him maybe pop up after she got her ass kicked and be like, I'll get you or, you know, 
because clearly he's it leaves it open for a sequel. Dude, I love the portal out of Hugh Grant's mouth in uh in the like hot air balloon in the little games oh, thing. Oh, that was all fun. the treasure. Dude, yeah, dude, that was awesome. Well, that's one thing I just liked in general. That was totally a video game, you know, reference. That was from the video game portal. They even used like the same colors. They had red for one and blue for the other. It was, I love that. That was such a fun idea. I still really give mad props to those college kids that invented that game. Yeah, no, that was a cool game. I kind of wish they would implement it in the, in other first person shooters, but shit, dude, I don't have time to play video games, so I, I don't know. Maybe they have. <laughs> well, I, I, I anyway. Um, let's see. What else can we say about this movie, man? I don't know. We 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 liked it. It was good. It was a great cast. It was fun. I don't yeah, think we have too much in, more, Mike. Yeah, go see it in the theaters. Yeah, definitely go see it in the theaters. Uh, Mike, how many reels do you give? Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, man, I'm gonna give it four out of five reels. I had a great time. Wow, Mike. Wow, you did have a great time. You had a better time than me because I only give it three and a half. Well, you know, sometimes that can happen, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I I don't have anything ill to speak of it. It's just some things could have been tweaked, some things could have been better, some things could have been worse for sure. But okay, Mike, then. Why don't you tell our lovely listeners what we're going to watch next week? All right. So uh, next week, we are going to be watching the movie Air about uh, the uh, marketing campaign created around Air Jordans. Yeah, it says uh, it follows the history of shoe salesman Sonny Vaccaro and how he led Nike in his pursuit of the greatest athlete in the history of basketball, Michael Jordan. Yeah, it is pretty crazy that they identified this from the very beginning. Dude, they and, they made an entire freaking industry. He made an entire industry. And who knew it I was going to become as niche as it's become in recent years where people seek these shoes out and pay thousands and thousands of dollars for them. Yeah, no, I would have never known. And I, I was shocked that they still even make uh, um, Jordans. And yeah, oh yeah, no, they're still, man, the guy's a billionaire for a reason. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is the cast and also the director, Ben Affleck, directed it. He also is a co-star in it. Matt Damon, Jason Bateman. It's got a pretty killer cast, dude. I think this will be fun. Oh, Viola Davis. You can't forget Viola Davis. She plays uh, Michael Jordan's mom. Oh, cool. Yeah, no, she, she'll be a she. She's always a great character. So this this will be fun. Yeah, dude, I think it'll be a fun fun movie. Maybe not fun. It's actually probably more serious. I think it's a, probably a pretty serious drama, but I think there'll be some interesting things in the film. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to see it, man. Um it looks really interesting. Um I just I, I wonder how it's all gonna go down. Actually, you know what? It actually comes out today, Wednesday, April fifth. Because Easter, all the new movies are releasing on Wednesday instead of Thursday. Oh, get a little extra bang for their buck? I'm guessing something. But anyways, all right, Mike, so next week air. What what else you got to add other than go to your theaters, go watch Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves, go watch air. Just keep going to your theaters and support them because enough, a lot of people are not going. Now, they had, they did get going for John Wick, though. Yeah, no, and, and go see John Wick 4, if you haven't seen it. Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think I really have anything else, dude. Uh, we covered most of the things. Um, yeah, no, I think, I think that's, that's about it. All right, well, do your thing. All right, well, thanks for listening, everybody. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And uh, we'll catch you on the next podcast. Uh, like we've said like 10 times in this uh, pod, uh, make sure to go visit some theaters. They, they need some help. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.
Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now go out and catch a movie. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back after a week off because Ma Henshaw is a world traveler. She was out partying, drinking, doing the drugs, all those other fun things last week. We are now on episode number seven of Ma Henshaw Loses Her Cookies. We'll see how well she's feeling today up to talking about not just one movie, but possibly two movies since she missed last, last week's review of John Wick Chapter 4. Joining me from my sister's bedroom, Ma Henshaw. Welcome, everyone. I am here, and I don't have a margarita in my hand right now. Uh, The day is still young. The day is still young. Oh, yes. (laughs) Okay, Ma, so you skipped last week. Why, Why could you not be on the podcast last week? Is it because you hate me? No, no, I think I was traveling, but it's a blur. <laughs> Those are, that's the effect of having several margaritas before noon. Oh, yeah, yeah, and I have big ones sometimes. Wow. So, yeah. we missed, you missed John Wick Chapter 4. Do you want to talk about John Wick Chapter 4 real quick? Real quick, I loved that movie. It was really great. I, I, so much blood and so much shooting, and I loved watching people fall down a bunch of stairs. It was phenomenal. I recommend everybody go see it. Okay, but how many reels? Not reels. See, uh, okay, you're (laughs) just saying everybody go see it. Do you like this one better than the other three John Wicks? Yes, I do. I really do, and I mean, the first one was very good. But this one was, was an absolute blast. And the car chases, well, I don't know if I'm supposed to give that away, but that it was fun. It was a fun movie. Well, Mom, our podcast has been out for a while. The movie's been out for a while. What, what was fun about the car chases that you're afraid to talk about? Oh, it's just crazy. They keep driving around in circles and then changing directions, which is a hoot when you're driving around in circles. I mean, it was just a real crazy car race. It was great. What was your favorite part of John Wick Chapter 4? Okay, I really had fun with the stair episode where he's killing all these guys as he's trying to get up the stairs to go do the duel. And he gets clear up there after wiping out a lot of people. And then he falls all the way down the stairs. And knowing that he does his own... Um, um, work and everything. He was the one that fell, I gather. And it, it was just unbelievable. I, I I couldn't help it. It was just funny and ridiculous. And I hope he didn't hurt his back. <laughs> well, I'm sure he had several stunt doubles, Mom. You do think he did? Oh, all right. I would hope so. But who knows? Maybe yeah. Keanu Reeves is trying to be like Tom Cruise and do all of his own stunts. Who knows? Well, I heard tell he, I thought he did try and do all of his own stunts, but if he did, wow, he's in good shape for 58. I don't know if he does all his stunts. He does all his shooting, but I don't know if he does all his stunts. Oh, okay. Good. I hope he had a stunt double because that looked painful. So, okay. How many cookies do you give John Wick chapter four? I think, well, I give it a five. So the perfect score for John Wick Chapter 4. You really liked it better than the original. I did. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. It was very fun. Okay. End of Nothing quote. wrong with that. All right. So on to this week's film. We did Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. Let me guess. You're going to give this one a perfect score too. You loved it. It was the best movie ever, right? No, I have some uh, qualms about it. Is it because the Dungeons and Dragons is satanic and you didn't let me play when I was a kid? <laughs> no, I was very surprised. I the, I mean, okay, so there was sorcery and all that stuff. No big deal. But uh, no, I thought I liked it. I thought it was very good. But uh, 
some of the acting was a little bit, eh, you know, not real exciting. But uh, the girl, I can't remember the name of the gal that played the evil one. Uh, she was fantastic, and I really liked her. I thought she was very good. And uh, I liked Chris too. I mean, he was good, but it and uh, the, it was amazing. The uh, all the uh, I guess it's all well. It had to be CGI, but I thought that I can't say anything. But it was really wild, and uh, there were monsters. I won't say what, where, when, and how, but they were great. And uh, I thought it was a very good movie. And I would recommend people going to see that, too. How much nudity was in it? No, not anything that I noticed. Were you disappointed that there was no nudity? I was, yes. But, oh, well, we can't have everything. <laughs> um, would you recommend everyone to go see it in the theaters, or should they wait and watch it at home? Oh, you have to go see it in the theaters because of this... Oh, you just have to. There's awesome stuff like uh, great visuals of bombs and, and mazes and, and all sorts of things that uh, you should go to the movie to see this. Yes. Well, it is a movie. You mean go to the theater? Yeah. Yeah. Go to the theater. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So anything else you want to add about Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves? Oh, I just loved the creatures. Oh, uh, they they were so Which which creature was your favorite then? Okay, can I I don't know. I'm gonna say it anyway. I love the dragon. The fat dragon? Oh, looked like wood to me almost. It was just crazy. It was a crazy dragon and it was awesome. Yeah, the, the fat dragon, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There were other dragons in it, but the Oh I know, but that the, was the big know. one. Yes. Yeah, that was the biggie, the main one. And and I also loved how how the apple grew. Oh, oh that's that, giving away more stuff. Dad, how the apple grew? What do you mean? There was an apple that they got that they planted in the soil, and it grew into a big tree. I don't remember that part at all. I don't know what you're talking about. They were in the, 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 it was in the baseball stadium. It was a hoot. Baseball stadium? Yeah. The what? hell are you talking about baseball stadium? Yeah, well. Okay, go watch the movie again then. Thank you. I don't remember, I don't, there was no baseball stadium in this movie. It's Dungeons and Dragons. Well, okay, folks, you go and you tell me if there was, because there was. I think you must have fallen asleep and you were dreaming that whole scene. Well, maybe I had too many margaritas. I don't know, but yeah. Okay, so fine. Back on topic. How many <laughs> cookies do you give Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves? All right. I will give it a four because some of the acting was kind of corny. There. Oh, that and Hugh Grant was in it too, which was interesting. Was he... Better or worse than his other villain role we've wit witnessed this year? Um, I liked this part. I thought he was better in this one. Mm -hmm. You thought he was more fun in this one or just better? Yes, much, no, fun. More fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, the other one, he was too serious. Yeah, he was just kind of, I don't know. And I think he was a better villain than the other one because it's a lot more of a interesting villain storyline. This one, he's more of a pawn of the true villain. Well, that's true. He is. But I don't know. I still like him in this one better. I don't know why. Because I'm old, probably. That's it. There you go. Do you wish you saw <laughs> Hugh Grant naked? Well, that would be nice, but it didn't happen. <laughs> oh, Jesus, mother. Okay. Okay. So four out of five reels or cookies for this yep. one. Right. Uh, perfect five. score for John Wick. What yep. about next week's film? We're talking about air. I'm going to air, hopefully, if 
everything goes right and the baby doesn't cry, wait a minute, we'll uh, go to the movie tomorrow and see air. And I'm looking forward to it. With Frankie Lala? Yes, with my dear son-in-law. Well, good. That'll get him out of the house and yes. keep him out of trouble. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Anything else you want to add for your listeners, Mom? Just go. These have been fun movies, and you should go to them all. Okay. Bye. Well, I I guess that's it. Go to the movies. That's what we keep saying. We said it many times in Mike and I's podcast. Ma Hinch has said it here. We need to support these movie theaters if we want to keep them open and we want to keep going because people are not going back to the theaters like they really hope they would have. John Wick 4 has brought people back. The big blockbusters have brought people back, but this is a blockbuster. It's not as big as the other two, but, uh, you know, still go and check out these big blockbuster, huge set piece kind of films in the theaters because it helps. Just go to the theater if you can. Try and go to the theater a couple times a month. That little bit helps. Help them out, people. Go for it. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for listening to Ma Hinshaw Loses Her Cookies, episode number seven. Uh, I Maybe we'll talk to you next week. Maybe not. I don't know. It depends if Ma's up for it or not. So thanks, everybody, for listening. We will chat with you later. Bye.